Welcome back to Celebrate Michigan. I'm Kevin King. I'm Christy Daring. We are talking with Michigan author Mary Minock about her memoir, The Way Back Room. Mary, what do you want people to get out of this book? Well, um, I want them to get my story, um, but I also want them to see my story as part of a lot of stories about uh, the neighborhood, about uh, the city, and I I want them to remember their own stories. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's it's not good if people have a, a skewed memory of growing up in the city and without um, looking at the whole fabric of it. So I've, I've tried to be really accurate in terms of uh, events, in terms of places, and uh, you know, it's part of a fabric of, of memory that I think we all share. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the church played a role a, a pretty big role in your life growing up. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, the church played uh, a, a tremendous role. Um, and of course, I went to Holy Redeemer School, Holy Redeemer High School. And back in those days, um, neighborhoods were known by the, by the parish. I mean, we didn't uh, you know, talk about someone who lived on um, West Verner and Central, we'd say, oh, someone who lived in St. Gabe's Parish. We, uh, the, the, the church pretty much um, supported us through our whole life. It was, it was the authority, the um, uh, identity in the neighborhood. And this was pre-Vatican II Catholic Church. Uh, we had redemptorist priests. We had uh, uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary uh, teachers, um, and there were some really great things about it, and there were some really terrible things about it, and some things in retrospect that are funny, and some things in retrospect that aren't funny. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that um, a lot of people who grew up in that era will, will relate to because the church was so powerful, mm -hmm. uh, especially if we went to <coughs> parochial school. Uh, we learned a lot of stuff, and uh, we uh, learned a lot of rules. And um, well, we've got the, some. I, I just want to get to the pictures because we have a picture of a, an angel. That's oh, quite important to you. Yeah, this oh. this is um, one of my prized holy cards. Uh, I collected holy cards, and I had to trade uh, several of mine to get this card. And what's distinctive about this particular card is that it's got a lace fringe. Uh, most of them didn't have that, and I got it from a girl who collected it uh, from uh, her, uh, the holy store in her grandmother's neighborhood. And so she used to bring cards that we hadn't seen in ours. And of course, the religious article store uh, was known as the holy store. Mm -hmm. And it stood right across the, uh, from this church on <coughs> Junction Avenue. Uh, this is the book cover of a very influential book in my childhood. Uh, this is uh, my picture story of Davy Crockett. And like every kid in America, I fell in love with Davy. But Davy <laughs> was particularly important to me, extremely important, because he came from Tennessee like my father. Mm -hmm. And he became the connection. And uh, I started to read because of uh, knowing that Davy lived around the same time as my um, father's family had come from North Carolina to Tennessee. And I just uh, was able to relate to the southern part of myself through the Davy Crockett story. Mm -hmm. And since no one was speaking to me much about my father, this was my private way of communing with that part of myself. Okay, and and finally another Tennessean. Um, <laughs> this is uh, one of my. This is my last surviving picture of Elvis, and um, I, I actually was a little ambivalent about putting it in the book because it's my <laughs> picture, and uh, I'm not sure I want to share it with the world. But it's um, signed. Pardon? It's signed. Oh, it's signed. Of course, it's signed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. This is one of several. And I fell in love with Elvis when I was 11, going on 12. And um, um, I saw him. 
Yeah, that's, that's in the book. I saw uh -huh. him at Olympia Stadium uh, in March of 1957. He had his gold May suit on. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, you, he was a real heartthrob. You know, people will read this book and uh, conjure up some all their own memories of their their childhood, but. It's one thing to have the memories, it's another to put it on paper. So how do you go about uh, writing a book and what's the process of putting your thoughts down into a memoir? Okay. Um, well, there, you know, there are memoirs and memoirs and I am of the belief, I'm a writing teacher after all, that anyone, even if they, they write down some things for their grandchildren, that's important. It's important to have those memories written down because uh, they need to be continued. But the process of writing a bona fide memoir that's going to be published <laughs> is the process of writing and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. And also seeing it from the point of view of what is common to everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have our particular stories. I think it's really important to be honest, uh, not to censor them. You know, sometimes when we get older, we love to remember things in a censored kind of way. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is that anybody reading knows their own story that's the uncensored version. And right. uh, it touches their heart to have someone be honest. But I think um, writing memoir is important for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, collected memoirs that older people have written. Um, that, that really, really are important and they're really satisfying. But I think it's very much like, it's you know, very much like the process of fiction. It's a lot of rewriting and writing mm -hmm. uh, again. I want to make sure we're getting close to the end of our show, but how can somebody go and purchase your book? Where should they go? Well, um, they can go to um, my publisher, Bottom Dog Press, and the easiest thing to do is to find that on the web. They can get it on Amazon, they can get it at Barnes and Noble, and um, it will soon be available in bookstores. Right. Uh, it's so eloquently also, written. Also a Kindle version. It reads oh, so great. nicely. Yeah, thank but you. I don't like that. Thank <laughs> you for being on our show, I'm afraid we're running out of time. Um, Thank you. What, it, you was, it was say something wonderful. wonderful about I, it. I, just, I really, I, I, I picked up a few pages and I just wanted to read more and more. So yeah. it's a good book. Go out and get it Great and read book. it. And thank you for tuning into our show where we celebrate Michigan together. We'll see you next time. All right.